Welcome back, Thrashing Outdoors. Uh, so, I wanted to put this video together because uh, I've seen a couple. I've seen a guy that I watch on on YouTube having some problems with a skunk, and I'm kind of hoping this video reaches him. So that way, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, maybe I'll link the video in a couple of his comments or. or uh, um, Try to find his email or whatever and shoot him an email. He's pretty, pretty uh, well-known guy. You guys all, some of you probably already know him. He goes by LFG or Lake Fork guy. So he's had a skunk under the house for quite a while. I've seen several videos. He's having problems catching this thing. So today I'm gonna build you a trap. And I want to. This is not for the faint of heart. This is for a nuisance animal that you do not want anymore. And I guarantee you, it's going to work. In order to build this trap, you need four items. A bucket, a sawzall. Everything's kind of wet. It's rained all day and uh, everything's soaking wet. So I don't really have anywhere to put anything. but. Uh, number three on the list is your trap, which is called Kana Bear. Now, back in the day, as you want to say, uh, I used to do a lot of trapping. We trapped anything that we could sell the fur off of. And I don't have too many left, but I do have a couple, and this is one of them. And um, I'll put, I'll do some research when I'm editing this video to pull up the prices on these. This is probably, I think this is a 110. Um, they call this a 110, they're, they're sizes, they come 220s, 330s, 440s, and uh, in order for this one to work, you need the trap to be able to fit on the inside of the bucket, just like that. So to give you a little uh, background on these traps, these are, this is called a Kana Bear. And um, the way this works is... Uh, it sets up just like this and you got these two triggers here and when the animal walks through it comes down and essentially snaps her neck so it's a clean kill uh, and it's not painful to the animal but um, these will also hurt you <laughs> I broke a finger with these so uh, and like I said I don't have too many of them anymore but I do I will pull up some stuff online and and give you the exact price and you can find them at farm and fleet um, probably Menards uh, any um, like Blaine's farm and fleet anything like though that, that kind of store home I think farm and home has them um, there's another store that I can't think of right now but uh, they're all gonna have them or one of them should have them at least I bet you could probably buy, buy them online Amazon probably has them as well. But I'll do some research, make sure I figure out what the price of these are going for today. And then a couple things that I don't have with me are some tools that you could use with them and I'll post some pictures of, of the tools that you might want to get with it. If you're not real experienced, one, it's the safety, it kind of helps protect you from getting your fingers smashed or anything. And uh, one of those is a, it, it's a long bar, which I'll, I'll post on there. And, and it squeezes these two together. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this off here. So the way that works is see how the the bar here is, that's your, that's your spring loaded. When it's loaded, this is what it's gonna look like. So see, you got your trigger holder here, right? So this is not gonna, this keeps it from setting off on you. Those are the la these, are, these hooks are the last two things that you're gonna actually uh, pull off to engage the trap. And this one's pretty old, like I said, I've had it for a long time. This is probably given to me by my grandfather. And in order to set them, you need to squeeze them and then hook the hook. And I mean, I'm not a small guy, but it's still 
difficult oh geez for me to get it squeezed oh and I can't do it right there and hooked so what those what those tools do is actually hooks here hooks here and allows you to get a better leverage on it squeeze them down tight and you can hold it with one hand clip the hook and that like I said it's a lot easier than trying to do it the way I was just trying to show you another thing that I believe was home built for, by my grandfather is it's like a uh, it's like a spring-loaded hook and what it does is once you get the trap set and you're ready to engage it and you got everything flipped up which I'll show you it, is it clips to here and that and that and what that does is it's it, it keeps the trap from being able to go off in any way shape or form so you're able to get the trap fully set the way you want get your pin engaged and the last thing you got to touch is just that piece which your fingers will be back here and and you just squeeze it and pull it off and you and you're away from trap there's no way that it can hit you i don't have one i like i said i think it was homemade i got it from my grandfather uh, and i don't have it anymore so i'm pretty sure i'll look online and see if i can find one but i'm i'm almost guaranteeing that i'm not gonna find it but i know that they sell the the uh the hooks to squeeze this at the store you'll probably find them right next right next to the traps at the store and just from recollection like i said i'll put it up i'll i'll, I'll find it and add, edit it in the video but it's uh you know one trap is maybe 10 bucks 15 bucks and the, the the grabbers are probably another five to seven, maybe ten. So you're twenty bucks in. So let's get uh, let's get to building this trap. Like I said, animals don't live coming from this one. So if you're worried about uh, you know setting the animal free, this isn't for you. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna take our bucket on the sides that this does not come up, which would be here and here we're going to cut about a one and a half inch slot just about like that and you can just bend it out bend it down do the same thing on the other side directly across Bend them down just like that. And you can take them off if you want. It's not a big deal. It's not. This is not going to affect anything. Cause the way the bucket's going to sit is like that, and the and the trap is going to rest on the on the edges. So now we've got our our bucket. $5 bucket or $3 bucket or used bucket. This is one I don't really care about. I've had it for a long time. Haven't used it. What we're going to do is we're going to may have to cut this right here because I don't know if I get this reset by, by my hands. Got it. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and get our trap ready. And by the way to do that is you're gonna the way it, it angles is just like this, right? So your trap, your it's held, and you're going to bring the square open to where your springs sit out to the side, just like that. And you've got your triggers down. This is the, the latch for the trigger. You're going to squeeze it open. Line it up. Now, like I said, this is you want to be careful right here because I've squeezed this so far now that the, the actual hooks are not, they're not touching. All right, so if they get flipped off and you let go or it, or it, it trips, 
it's going to hit you. Alright, so it's basically set right there. That's how it's going to be set. What we're going to do is we're going to take cat food, tuna, anything that puts off a strong odor, and we're going to set it in the back of this bucket. On the ground, where you want it to be set. So we're going to set it on the ground where we want it to be set. And all this chain here, here, that's just to stake it to something. So that way, if uh, it doesn't kill the animal right away, it doesn't run off with your trap. So you could, uh, you know, take a rope, tie it to a stake, wire it, whatever. Now, see, look, I just noticed this hook is off. So if I hit that, that uh, trigger, this thing was going to go. Well, what we do is we set it inside. Now it looks like I got to cut a little bit deeper on the bucket because what we want is this both of these to rest on this bucket here and it's not deep enough. So let me do that real fast. So now we got those a little bit deeper. We're going to take these after we've got our cat food and everything in there and we're going to set it in there just like that. And you can also take, um, depending on your ground, you take a couple bricks or something to set it on both sides to kind of. Uh, keep the, the, the bucket from rolling. So now, once we've got this in here, we can actually reach over and pull these hooks off, okay? That trap is live, it is ready to go. We've got our bait on the inside. The animal's not able to get to it unless they go through the trap. And uh, like I said, use something smelly, cat food, tuna. Just put the just put a little bit back in there. You don't have to put a whole can or anything. Just maybe dump a little bit in the bottom of the bucket before you you set your trap. So then, when the that nuisance animal, which we like to call skunk, comes walking through, he hits these triggers. Well, let's just hope that you got the full effect on that. So yeah, that's the aftermath. Uh, <laughs> even for this trap being so old, it actually still has a lot of power. So, I don't know if I can catch that in slow motion or, or what. Coming back to you, but uh, yeah. Like I said, this thing is, oh God, it's it's got to be 20 or 30 years old. Maybe, maybe longer. I don't know how long my grandfather's had it, but I've had it since I was, we were doing a lot of trap loan when I got my license. So I was 16, maybe 17. I'm 30, going to be 32 this year. So 16 years I've had it. So this thing's got to be almost 30 years old. If not, at least 20. I know my grandfather used it a lot longer before, um, 
I got it. So they're very powerful. They will, I, I broke a finger. Be very, very careful, but I promise you, use that bucket method with this, a skunk doesn't have a chance. Um, another thing, if you do go buy one, they, they lace them in a oil to keep them from rusting. Don't worry about the rusting. Put, you know, burn it, um, throw it in mud, get it, get the scent off of it, because the scent of that oil will sit on here and will detract that, that skunk. He will not come towards the food, no matter how good it smells with this oily mess. So once you get your new trap, throw it in a fire, burn the oil off, run it in the dirt, wash it off, let it sit in a bucket of water, do a bunch of stuff like that just to get, get rid of the scent. And then, uh, I promise you, you'll catch him. So, Lake Fork guy, I hope you get to see this message that I'm giving out to you here. Um, all, all I ask for is a shout out if you do. And if it works for you, and I'd like to be able to know uh, if you tried it or, or, if, uh, or how it worked. But I've been watching the videos. I've been messing with this skunk for a while, and uh, I can't help but laugh because I just... He lives so far away, I can't just get a hold of him and say, hey, let me come take care of that problem for you. But we used to trap so much when I was younger. And like I said, we trapped a little of everything. And, and even today, you know, I live in a, a suburb now, so um, I don't I don't have problems like that too much. You know, I get an occasional raccoon or uh, possum in the yard, but they, they don't bother me here. And I'm not, I'm not, back then I did it, that's how I made a living kind of as a kid. That was an extra, um, that was the way I made some money when I was 16, put gas in my truck and whatnot. I worked other jobs as well, but this was something me and my brother and, and some buddies could go do, and, and we made some decent money. So uh, I've done a lot of trapping, and I promise you, if you have a nuisance problem, whether it be a raccoon, possum, skunk, muskrat, uh, yeah, this thing's going to do the trick for you. And uh, another caution of warning, if you have pets, cats especially, uh, as long as this thing's set, do not let them outside. Because this is, I believe this is a 110, it might be a 220. I can't remember the exact sizes. I think, actually, this might be a 220. Um, but even the 110s, they're smaller, but they they pack a punch, and uh, small animals don't have a, a prayer against them. So make sure you keep your your pets away. Don't set it up while they're around. Don't let them out of the house while they're around. Uh, I don't want anybody to lose their animals. So, got any questions, comments, concerns? I've tried to cover everything I could think of with this, and uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll. Uh, Show you how to catch a mole. That's my problems in the in the city life. Is uh, I like to keep my grass nice and pretty, which needs to be cut. But uh, moles are the only thing I'm catching these days. So comments, concerns, let, leave them below. I'll, I'll answer. I answer all of them. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.